If you had to name the leading reasons people choose to end their lives through euthanasia and physician-assisted suicide, what would you guess? Intolerable pain? Terminal illness? No. Try loneliness, disability, and the ability to live independently. In Oregon, for example, where physician-assisted suicide has been legalized since 1997, almost 90% of those who end their lives in this way do so because of the loss of autonomy. Is it any wonder, then, that every major national disability organization, along with the American Medical Association and World Medical Association, consistently oppose physician-assisted suicide? The lives of those suffering from depression, disabilities, poverty, sickness, and terminal illness are put directly at risk by physician-assisted suicide. Sold as death with dignity, physician-assisted suicide delivers nothing of the kind. Instead of caring for the most vulnerable patients through competent medical care and community services, physician-assisted suicide offers death, and only death. Vulnerable people who should be helped, cared for, and loved instead feel pressured to resort to suicide based on the false promise that it will ease the burden of their loved ones and society as a whole. And once a society accepts and normalizes this deadly practice, it isn't long before the so-called right to die becomes a duty to die. If you want to know what this looks like, consider the case of Tom Mortier. Tom hadn't given much thought to Belgium's liberal euthanasia laws. He didn't think they affected him. It seemed to Tom that if a person wanted to die, who are we to stop him? Why can't that person simply make that choice? Besides, it doesn't affect anyone else. Tom's perspective changed forever one day when his wife received a phone call. The caller was from a hospital, letting her know that they needed to take care of Tom's mother's affairs since she had been euthanized. Tom was horrified. His mother had suffered with chronic depression for more than 20 years. Yet Tom had no idea that she was going to be given a lethal injection. Neither the oncologist who administered the injection nor the hospital informed him that euthanasia had been offered to his mother. With the help of ADF International, Tom filed an application with the European Court of Human Rights, challenging the government for failing to protect the life of his mother. Tragically, what happened to Tom and his mother isn't confined to Belgium, where at least six people are killed by euthanasia every day including children for whom there is no minimum age limit. In the U.S., it took 20 years for the first four states to legalize physician-assisted suicide, a practice nearly synonymous with euthanasia. But since 2015, six more states plus Washington, D.C. have joined them, and efforts to roll back protections for vulnerable lives continue to move forward in other states. As the march to legalize physician-assisted suicide has gained ground, some doctors, like Dr. Rachel DeSanto, have pushed back. Faced with a Vermont state law that would force her to, at the very least, refer patients for physician-assisted suicide, Dr. DeSanto worked with Alliance Defending Freedom to file a lawsuit that protected her rights of conscience and her patients' lives. Weaponizing state power to bully healers into violating their conscience not only flouts the Hippocratic Oath, it tramples key constitutional freedoms as well. No one should ever feel so alone, afraid, or abandoned that they ask a doctor to end their lives for them. True compassion means always caring for the sick, the elderly, and the suffering. But physician-assisted suicide can only deliver premature death. This counterfeit compassion robs victims, their families, and medical professionals of dignity and life itself. Isn't it time we reject this lethal deception and opt for life once and for all? To find out more about the effort to protect vulnerable lives, visit www.adflegal.org physician-assisted-suicide.